Hey there, John Morris here. I'm the lead instructor for the Wishlist Member Certified Developers Program and the CEO at JohnMorrisOnline.com. And in this video, I'm going to talk about understanding the Wishlist Member API. The Wishlist Member API is a little bit different than most WordPress plugins in terms of developing on top of uh, the Wishlist Member platform. And so I want to cover what some of those differences are and the different ways that you can interact with the API. So the API actually has two different ways that you can interact with it, unlike most plugins. Most plugins, you have uh, WordPress style functions that are available that you can just simply call in uh, in your plugin. Oftentimes these are referred to as template tags. And you just simply call those functions and uh, use them in your plugin if you uh, want a certain piece of functionality or theme or whatever the case may be. Wishlist member has that, but it's also different in the sense that not only can you, we refer to that as accessing the API internally, meaning you can access the API only uh, in that way only um, if the plugin that you're creating is installed on the same WordPress install uh, as uh, wishlist member okay so those those functions are available to the local uh, WordPress environment however wishlist member also unlike most plugins has the ability con to connect to it externally and this is more like a true API that you might see from something like YouTube or Vimeo or even Aweber where they have an actual external API where you connect to the API you authenticate then once authenticated then you can use certain uh, access certain resources and use certain methods to interact with uh, the API and, and do something with that particular application so wishlist member again has both of these and so when you're sitting down to develop on top of wishlist member it's important to understand uh, which method you're going to use and as a result then what uh, different functions or classes or, or resources that are available uh, that you need to use. And so uh, again we're just going to cover uh, some of that here in this video. So the first thing that's important to talk about and here we are on the codex I'll go ahead and head to the downloads page and what we're looking at is the wishlist member API 2 documentation. So if we click the click to download, this is actually a PDF, so it's going to pop up here. And what this is is a document that actually lays out the the raw interface itself of the API. Uh, and so this is the base, most basic method of interacting with the API. And as you might imagine, it's a REST API. So uh, it's very straightforward in terms of you have certain resources that you have access to. So if you look down here under API resources, you have levels, level members, level content, content protection, uh, members, and then of course the old API access. So you have all of these different resources that are available. And then you have these four methods for accessing those, re accessing those resources. So, for example, if you're interacting with the levels resource, you could get all of the levels. You could post, which would be creating a new level. You could put, which would be updating a level, or you could delete uh, a level. Okay, so you have all those four methods for every resource. Again, if we came down here to members, just as an example, we could use get method to get members. Uh, we could use the post method to create a new member. We could use the put method to update a member, and we could use the delete method to delete a member. And so that those examples hold true for all of the different resources that are available here. Okay, so on again, on a basic level, you have resources, and you have then methods to interact with those different resources. And this essentially covers everything that's available in Wishlist Member, from membership levels to uh, in interacting with members to uh, working with uh, different content and its protection and its access settings and so forth. However, um, interacting with a raw API like this can, um, depending on you know, what application you're, you're building, it can be a little bit daunting to actually have to uh, create all of the code to interact with these resources yourself. So, 
what we've provided is we have a class called WM API class. And this class is actually a wrapper class for the API. And so what this does is it provides the basic methods for you to be able to interact with all of the resources using the methods that we just talked about. So you'll notice here in this code, of course, we have a constructor, but we have a request method. Uh, down here a little bit further, we have an auth method. And then down below, we have our main uh, methods, post, get, put, and delete. Okay. And so what this wrapper does is it actually handles all of the authentication and uh, URL, uh, you know, structure and everything that you need in order to interact with the API. When you use this class, then uh, you can see by the constructor, you pass in um, the wishlist member uh, or the WordPress URL. Uh, you pass in your a and you have pass in your API key. Those are the only two things that are required to use this. So uh, from there, then uh, this code will figure out what the actual API URL is for your WordPress install. It'll uh, use your API key to then authenticate with the uh, with the wishlist member API that you're connecting to, and then it'll run whatever request that you ask it to run, whether that's uh, a post, a get, a put, or delete. Okay, so you actually uh, don't really need to act, interact directly with the API. In fact, there's very few uh, instances where I could see where you you would need to actually interact directly with the API. Instead, you would want to use this wrapper class in order to interact with the API because it has all of the same methods available and you can access all of the same resources. Okay, so. For the majority of cases when you're connecting to the wishes member API externally, you're just going to want to use this wrapper class. Now, you'll notice I said externally because uh, if if you're interacting with the wishes member API internally, then you actually don't even need to use this wrapper class. So, again, just to be clear about the difference between um, interacting with the API externally versus internally. Externally would be if you're creating some sort of script that's completely outside of WordPress and so you don't have access to local WordPress functions, then you would need to connect to the API externally and you would need to use this wrapper class. You would need to put in the URL of the WordPress install that you're connecting to that has wishlist member installed on it and then the API provided by wishlist member in that uh, install. The other scenario where you might use this class is if you're connecting to a wishlist member install that is actually maybe you're maybe you are inside of WordPress and you have wishlist member installed on that that uh, install of WordPress, but you want to connect to another one. Maybe you have uh, uh, install of WordPress or wishlist member installed somewhere out on another domain or a subdomain or something, and you want to connect to that external one. So again, you could use this um, class to do that and it, it would be used pretty much the same way by specifying the URL and the key. Now, I'll show you here in just a little bit how how actually um, you don't even need to use this class in that instance. You could, um, but that that those are the only two real possible ways that um, you would want to use this class. More often than not, you're going to want to actually get into the WordPress style functions. So let me explain that in just a little bit. So here we're going to come over to our class-api methods.php. Now, just for your reference sake, I want to show you here's our wishlist member folder, and under core API helper, you can see we have our WM API class.php, we have class-api methods.php, and we have functions.php. So again, this is our WM API class that we just covered. Now here we're in class-api methods.php, and you'll notice that we're including our WM API class.php. So we're including the wrapper here, and now we're going we've created a class that actually allows you to more easily interact with the API, and it, it sits actually on top of the wrapper. So again, just another layer that makes it a little bit easier to interact with our API. Now, I just mentioned that uh, if you're connecting from one WordPress install to another one, 
that you don't need to actually use the WM API class.php. The reason that is is because you can actually um, instantiate this class, uh, an instance of this class on your own. And you'll notice that in the constructor you can connect to a URL uh, using an API key. So you can actually uh, use this class to connect to an external installation of WordPress and wishlist member uh, if you so choose. Um, again, this this class, however, does have um, WordPress specific functions in it. For example, you'll see site URL here. So this is only can be used if you're going from one WordPress and wishlist member install to another. You can actually take this class and use it outside uh, of WordPress. If you're going to work completely outside of WordPress, then you would need the WM API class to do that. Right, so again, uh, this is a, a, an internal class that gives you access to to certain methods. Um, you know, you'll notice in the constructor we do uh, some checking in terms of checking whether or not this is an internal or not. So we're just checking URLs to see um, if we're if the URL that's passed is we're connecting to our own local WordPress or we're connecting to an external one. We already get the API key for you if you're connecting to a local uh, install so you don't have to mess with that. Um, we load the API again using WM API class if need be and then you'll notice if we just took, take a look at one of the, the methods available here that we're doing checks in every one of these methods to see if we're connecting externally or internally. And if we're connecting internally, we actually use this wishlist member API request method, which is an internal method that allows us to connect to the API using PHP as opposed to having to make an HTTP request, which you would have to do using the normal external API. All right, so we handle all of that for you. So again, you'll see the methods that are available. We have get levels, get level, create level, update level, and we go through all of the resources and all of the methods for each resource and have uh, a method available for everything. So essentially everything that you can do connecting to the API directly, you can do through this class. Okay, so uh, again, very robust and comprehensive in terms of what you can do. Um, but again, in most cases, if you're writing a plugin, um, you're not still not going to need to use this class because we also have then a functions file that sits on top of that class. Uh, again, you can see it requires the API methods class. It instantiates the class, and then we have WordPress style functions where, yeah, we're just returning those methods, but we save you having to go in and instantiate the class. Um, you know, globalize, create your own methods, and so forth. So these are actually WordPress style functions that can be used immediately when Wishlist Member is installed. If you're connecting to that local install, you can just start calling these functions um, in, in if Wishlist Member is installed, and, and they'll they'll just work, and they'll they'll everything will be handled in terms of caching, connecting internally versus externally you know, connecting to the API and so on and so forth. All right, so in the majority of cases, this is probably what you're gonna use is these WordPress style functions. Now, one piece of advice uh, as you do use these, it's always good practice to check to see if the function exists first. So, you you know, do a if function exists uh, check uh, that when that returns true, then you actually call um, you call the function. That's just good habit. It's not necessarily because if a function gets deprecated or anything like that. It, it. I mean, that's true. That can be helpful. Although most of these, um, that probably won't be the case. It's, it's actually more uh, important just in case you know there's some sort of other error that stops the the functioning of uh, processing, uh, you know, of WordPress, and so. Um, for some reason, though, those functions aren't available at that time, or even more so when you're deactivating and reactivating uh, wishlist member. You want to make sure that if someone deactivates wishlist member, that uh, their site doesn't just stop working at that point because you have a bunch of functions in your plugin that are are calling uh, functions in wishlist member that then would no longer exist. Okay, so again, it's just 
good practice to uh, check to make sure the, the function exists before actually calling it. All right, so th those are the different kind of the ins and outs of the API and, and how it all comes together and hopefully help you to understand it a little bit better. Again, the main reason for all of this is because this is different. Uh, the Wishlist member API is different in the sense that you can connect to it both externally and internally and then to you know to just cut down on the uh, the the reuse of code we actually use the external api quote unquote uh for internal connections so um again hopefully this video helps you get your head around all of that and understand where it is that you need to to insert yourself in order to develop whatever it is that you would like to develop on top of wishlist member all right so thanks for watching the video and I'll talk to you later.